What's up guys? Hello Tangerines! If you're new to our channel, my name is Maddie. And I'm Jordan, and we are Tangerine Travels. And those are still our names, even if you're not new to our channel. <laughs> our Tangerine Travels have taken us to the Pueblo Mágico San Cristóbal de las Casas, one of the most recommended places for us to travel on our channel. In fact, the former president of Mexico called this the most magical of all the Pueblo Mágicos, or Pueblos Mágicos. Before we dive into our adventures here, we're going to tell you a little bit about how we got here, because often, well, no, pretty much always. We never tell you how we got from one city to the next. We usually just show up at a place and you have no idea whether we took a plane there or drove there. We almost always drive because Tangerine travels. It's our car, the reason we're called that in the first place. Yesterday morning, we woke up in Heroica Veracruz at five in the morning. Ahead of us was about a seven hour drive according to Google Maps, but it never takes seven hours. If it says it will, it ended up taking ten hours. We wanted to wake up super early so that we could have as much daylight as possible because we were told in Facebook groups, in comments, in private messages, and in emails that the drive into and around Chiapas is really dangerous because people will set up roadblocks, try to extort money out of you, and like other questionable things like that. Extortion is a thing that happens, it's common just pay it and like all this stuff and not only is this a dangerous drive but it's also raining like crazy whoa whoa we have not really been scared of driving since the initial crossing the border and going into mexico at which point we were scared of literally everything every little bump in the road and every strange <laughs> sign and topes and everything uh, which we called topes at the time. <laughs> <laughs> this drive through Chiapas is gorgeous. So many rolling hills and mountains just covered in green. But it's not all trees either. A lot of it's like grass covered hills. On the way up here, it's super pretty near the end of this drive to San Cristobal. Looking over the edge, you can just see for miles. And it's also sort of scary because the drop off you can see for miles as well. And it has really cool red sand all over the place. Not to say that any of this wouldn't happen, but nothing did happen. It was a super uneventful drive, except for getting caught in delays due to construction, where it was down to one lane for two ways of traffic. So, uh, do you want to explain what this is? I have no idea. It's like a bunch of clown taxis. There's balloons, sirens, people drinking champagne in some of them. <laughs> but yeah, so far we are absolutely loving this Pueblo Mágico, really feeling the culture and the magic of it. So in our excitement, we did tons of research about Chiapas and San Cristobal de las Casas. Okay, maybe not tons of research, but we did do a lot of research and we still have a lot to learn. Jordan is mandating that I tell you that we did not do a lot of research. We did research. Leave the amount that we did up to your imagination, but just know we know things. <laughs> We've seen things. <laughs> We're in Chiapas for the very first time. It is the southernmost state in Mexico. The name of the state of Chiapas is thought to have come from the ancient city of Chiapan. This area is well known for its tamales, a very unique spices, some of which I've never heard of before or tried, and also amber. One part of the state gets 120 inches of rain per year, comparing that to where I'm from, Arizona, we get like three, three that's inches. In, that's insane. And San Cristobal was actually the first Spanish city in the state, founded in the early 1500s. So this area actually has one of the largest native populations in all of Mexico, so a lot of the people here don't speak Spanish at all or just very limited words to sell the products that they make. I've actually I've never heard people talking between themselves in Nahuatl or other native languages before, ever in my life. It's very interesting. <laughs> but we are going to explore around the city and see what exactly makes this so special, why it is the most magical of the Pueblos Magicos. So come along! For our first breakfast in San Cristobal de las Casas, we went to this place called Carajillo where they prepare coffee at your table. I've never even had coffee prepared in like the, the drip style uh, in the US so this was totally new experience. And make sure you go to Cartagillo Cafe because there's another Cartagillo in right town the but that one isn't called Cafe. Mm -hmm. So they mix it all up, you had the burner heating it and explaining the whole process along the way. Mm -hmm. This cafe is a mezcla of three grains. 
Para el café de olla utilizamos piloncillo y canela. That was so cool. And this is He told me before that this is dark coffee. It has cardamom and honey. Wow, that is dark. This is dark coffee. <laughs> it looks darker than espresso. <laughs> yeah. And both of these were 45 pesos, so I mean, maybe a little bit more expensive than your average cup of coffee, but your average cup of coffee doesn't come with all that cool stuff, so... <laughs> Turco is what this one is called. And I got Café de Olla. We've been having all sorts of cool coffee experiences lately because yeah. back in Veracruz... This drink I ordered, it's called a lechero. It's espresso. They pour milk on it from way up high, and it's always served in a glass glass. But it's very typical of Veracruz. And when you want to refill, you take your spoon and tap on the glass glass. I don't know how many times I'm supposed to tap. <laughs> this is what I heard. I don't know if it actually works. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done tapping. <laughs> Should I leave this on? What's gonna happen? <laughs> you ended up getting it like a million times after that. That was a really, really cool experience as well. So adding to the growing list of first this morning, I tried huevos estrellados, but it was... No, huevos divorciados. Usually I can't because salsas have onion in them, or at least one of the red or the green has it. But this plate was amazing. It was sopes. And a sope is like made with corn or masa, kind of like pressed into a thick tortilla-like yeah, thing. Yeah, with black beans, then huevos estrellados, and then both sauces. The green sauce salsa had cilantro in it. The red salsa had epazote, epazote, which is a herb I've never, to my knowledge, tried before. Very popular in Latin American cooking, apparently. And it has a petroleum-like smell, which would make one not want to use it for cooking, but when you combine it to make tea or sauces, it gives a very nice, earthy, delicious flavor. But that was awesome. And 90 pesos, totally getting that again. Pan de elote. Any city that has a lote or any form of it is my favorite city, so this is my favorite city. <laughs> Not even kidding. She gets seriously depressed if a city doesn't have her elote or corn or pan de elote or something. 100%. <laughs> Although there's a big amber industry here, we read that most of the amber sold here is actually fake. So if you're looking to buy some, make sure you do your research so you know how to tell the real stuff from the... Amber busters! <laughs> We've been meandering around Mercado Santo Domingo, and at first it doesn't look like it's that big, but the more you walk around here, the more you realize that it's... it's... a giant maze. <laughs> and huge and confusing and you can easily get lost. <laughs> Normally Maddie likes looking at this stuff a lot more than I do and I'm not typically someone who can look at things like this for a long time, but this market is really cool, so many colors and... <laughs> not to mention you see things similar to this all throughout Mexico, but here they're more elaborate, more colorful, and a lot more complex. After walking around for a little while today, this place has a really, as far as appearance goes, a very Tapalpa meets Ahi Heek vibe. Right now it is especially loud because I think some type of virgin... Is it Guadalupe? I have no idea. Mary? I need to look that up. <laughs> man, oh man, I can already hear people being like, oh my gosh, you have, you've been in Mexico for almost a year and you don't know this. Well, I will be the first to tell you that I don't know everything as much as I would like to think I do. And the more I learn, the more I realize I do not know. <laughs> There's fireworks, rockets, and then a fan that's right now coming this way. I don't know what this is about. <laughs> I bet, it has, I bet this go. has something to do with those clown taxis that we saw. Yeah. Setting car alarms off everywhere. <laughs> that guy lighting those off had 
such a pleased look on his face, but especially when it made the loud boom. I hate that guy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't hate random strangers, but I do scare very easily, and those are freaking loud. <laughs> And they sound way too close to gunshots, so... Uh, how about you hate him for doing that? I hate him for doing that. Very good. <laughs> or you hate that he's doing that. I hate that he's doing that. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's another one. Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, what else about San Cristobal de las Casas? This place surprised me in that there are so many people here from all over the world. So, in tourist places you would expect that, but you have backpackers, the hippie type, the European type in general. For once, I'm not the only white girl with green eyes or blue eyes in a city. <laughs> there's a lot of digital nomads here. Uh -huh. And it's surprisingly young. As far as the travelers go, very, very young. A lot of people our age. So it's almost been a full day. What do you think of San Cristobal de las Casas? It's a mouthful to say. <laughs> De acuerdo. I don't really understand the name. San Cristobal de las Casas. Saint Christopher of the Houses? The pretty colorful houses with red roofs that the city has. I'm just kidding, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but what do I think of it? This is a really cool place. Super cheap. I know that breakfast place we showed earlier wasn't the cheapest prices, but man, you can get a glass of wine for 27 pesos, a coffee or a cappuccino with Bailey's, a large one for 35 pesos. Some of the cheapest prices we've seen in all of Mexico. Super unique, lots of lots of stuff going on, very culturally some adjectives that I can't think of right now. <laughs> rich? It's super yes, rich yes. in culture. And just to butt in, I think it's partly because this is such a melting pot of cultures from all over the place. There's people speaking French and German and Spanish and um, the native languages. And all of these people are bringing pieces of their own culture here. So it's kind of become this like hyper diverse cultural mountain town. I Love it. And love it, love it, love it. <laughs> and also, walking through the streets, they're not too busy right now, but I couldn't believe how many people are here and people driving down the street, like even walking streets, and you have to like weave through everyone when I mean, you have the whole street and both sidewalks. <laughs> and not only that, with all these people, everyone's just like, ooh, pretty things to look at, including myself. So no one's looking where they're going. <laughs> no one will move out of the way for you. It's a crash collision situation all the time. <laughs> and a, a couple interesting things. Before coming here, we had read, hey, if you thought the beggars were bad in this city, just wait till you get to San Cristobal. Or if you thought the vendors were pushy in this city, just wait till you get here. Well, so we came here with that expectation. But in reality, yes, there's lots and lots of vendors here. But are they pushy? 99% of them? Not at all. I think they're actually pretty respectful. Yeah, very much so. I appreciate cities where there are a lot of vendors, and even if people are selling like dumb trinkets or whatever it is, they're at least working, and they're trying to work hard, and they're not begging. In my book, that that makes a good city, because you have hardworking people. There is some begging, but for every 99 vendors, there's one beggar. So. Good ratio. Yeah. <laughs> so. Final first impressions for Final day number one. Final first impressions, that doesn't make sense to me, but I'll go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering this is as far south as we've been in Mexico, this is like almost as far south as it gets. It's freaking cold here. Oh yeah, it is really cold <laughs> up in the mountains. But we're at 7,200 feet above sea level, so we're really, really high. But something else that's cool, there's lots of nature here. I really like that. Like, surrounded by trees and pretty rolling hills. You said it's cold though. How cold? In the night and in the day? High 60s in the day if you're lucky. And then at night, something like 45. <laughs> but thankfully, we have the most comfortable bed with so many warm blankets on top of it. It's amazing. <laughs> it's like sleeping in the clouds. <laughs> it is. Two questions for you. Do you have any final first impressions? And what are you excited to do here or around here coming up? Okay, final first impressions. I am astonished for how many languages, cultures, food, and different people from all over the world, including like the, the native population, which is very ingrained in this culture. I'm surprised how well everyone gets along. Like the energy, the vibe is really just nice. It feels good 
to be here. So I'm excited to be spending now like a little bit over a week after this. For what I'm excited about, there is a ton of nature around here. We're really hoping to see another gruta or cave. Uh, go do some hiking up in these beautiful mountains that are surrounding the entire city. And I do believe there's a water ball. Water ball? A water ball. Does it rhyme, rhyme with schmutter schmall? <laughs> it rhymes with schmutter schmall. A waterfall around here too, which as you know, we love. <laughs> So what do you guys think of San Cristobal de las Casas? Does it have a nickname? Can we call it something shorter, first of all? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please share it with someone who would enjoy it as well. Yeah, share it on Facebook, share it on Reddit, share it wherever you like to share it. And subscribe to our channel to see our upcoming videos here in this Pueblo Magico and our travels in the world right now, Mexico, and one more thing. <laughs> you get notified the next time we put out a new video. <laughs> and we will see you in the next one.